this is Carrie back with Homeschool Coffee Break. Sorry, it took a little pause to get started. I was trying something new. I thought, hey, let's have a little music going because you never really know when the live button is really going to start. Hey, <laughs> excuse me. We, I am so excited. This is going to be a fun, fun um, presentation. I understand if you're listening to the podcast, you may not be able to see everything, but... I will tell you that you'll have all access to the things that we're going to say. And actually, you could go to the um, to the post that will be listed here, and you might be able to see this as well. Why? Because we're going to start with the cooking demonstration. Then we're going to talk about Palm Sunday and Passion Week or Holy Week and some things that you could be doing to prepare your kids for that celebration as we lead up to Resurrection Sunday. Last week we started with a heart check, a heart check for mom and then a heart check for our kids as well. We're going to move forward and talk a little bit more about specifically Palm Sunday and Gethsemane. So, Let's get started with our cooking demonstration. I will try to explain this as well as I can. And actually, I'm going to realize the light wasn't that great. So I thought I would just go ahead and um, get the light going there as well. So I was looking. If you are joining us on the live or the replay, um, Tell me if you already are doing some things to prepare for Easter or if you have an idea, something, one thing that maybe you're going to do with your family or maybe an Easter tradition as well. I would love to hear that. So I'm trying to get my phone going and pay attention to all of this. Sorry for the pause. Okay. What we're going to do is start with some bread dough. You probably already know what this is, but we're going to start with bread dough. I have some leftover homemade bread dough that lasts in the refrigerator for about a week, week and a half. And I made it um, last week, maybe sometime. You could just go buy the pop out of the can bread dough, whatever. Just find a recipe that would be your favorite bread dough. And then your kids on Saturday night before Easter will have their bread dough and you're going to pinch pieces off or you might take a biscuit and cut it in half if you get those round biscuits that come out of the can. But I'm going to just peel some off like this and I'm going to flatten it. If it starts to stick at, with your kids' hands, then just have a little bit of flour here and I can always just sort of sprinkle it on my hands and then begin to do the flattening. We basically want a circle that's about two or three inches in diameter. Once we get our circle, the next thing we need, I gotta get all the supplies that are sitting here, they're just not handleable. A large marshmallow. I had to go buy some of these today because I didn't have any. You're gonna put the marshmallow on the bread dough and you're going to roll it all up and pinch it together so you can't see the marshmallow and it's not falling out. There's all the creases, if you can see. I just sort of pinch the dough together. The next thing you want to do is take your, your roll that you're making, and then I've already melted some butter. Oh, wait, before I do that, let me tell you one other thing. We need melted butter and then we need cinnamon sugar. If you've never made cinnamon sugar, it's very easy to make. I just have some cinnamon here. Wow, the light is really bright. Can't really see what's in there. And I'm just going to pour some cinnamon in here so that here we have cinnamon and sugar. And then I'm going to get a spoon and just mix it together until the cinnamon is all blended. You can probably buy cinnamon sugar, but I'm too cheap. Plus, I just always have sugar and cinnamon, so whenever I need it, it's all here. I just blend it till it's pretty thoroughly blended, and it looks something like that, a medium brown. Okay, next thing we're going to do is this. Take your roll. Put it in the melted butter. Mine is not real hot. Actually, it doesn't look too melted anymore. So I'm going to have to roll it around. 
to get it covered on all sides. Normally, if it's already melted, because I did this about 30 minutes ago, it just dips and it's really soggy. Next, we take it and we're going to roll it in the cinnamon sugar until it is completely covered. And it looks like a little round ball. So here it is. And then, well, I, didn't, I forgot to spray the, the pan. Normally I have a big nine by 13 pan, but with the demo, we're only doing a couple. So I take my little thing, I'm just gonna put it right here. I'm gonna do one more as we're talking. I'm gonna pinch off a little bit more dough here. These are called resurrection rolls. We make these on Saturday night. And my grandkids, I think, still make them. Um, but we would make these on Saturday night. When the kids were little, they, the first time they ever did it, they just thought this was so awesome. Anyway, um, they, I make them on Saturday night so that the dough has time to rise and it becomes a little lighter and fluffier. Um, you know, that's just how I am. You could make them Sunday morning, but everyone's in a big hurry. So I just let them sit out on the counter with a, a dishcloth over them. And then we have all of them ready. Let's see, get a little more butter on this one. That, you know, and you don't have to use the butter, but I think the cinnamon sugar sticks a little better. All right, so then we're gonna take this one again, in case you're just joining us, roll it in the, the cinnamon sugar. Okay, this one's done too. I tend to put them seam side down. So the seam is here. I'm going to put that down. All we have is two little balls there. And then I cook them at 350 for about 10 minutes. I'm going to put them in the oven right now. And hey Google, set a timer for nine minutes. We'll do it just for nine minutes. Sure, nine minutes and clean off my hands. Just one second. Let me do that real quickly. My hands are completely full of butter. All right, super simple thing. Now, I don't know if you can already guess or if you've already made these before, but there's a really good object lesson. When I pull them out, I will show you exactly how this all works. In the meantime, let's talk about Palm Sunday. Got to get my notes here. Palm Sunday and our... Um, and Gethsemane. Let's just talk about Passion Week. We actually, we started with Saturday night, moving on to Sunday, Easter Day, Resurrection Day, and I'll show you why. That's the last day. That is Easter. Let's back up and go to this coming Sunday. One week before Easter is Palm Sunday. This is the time that Jesus sends his disciples in to get a coal uh, a donkey that's never been ridden, and he rides the donkey into uh, Jerusalem. I'm pretty sure Jerusalem. Into Jerusalem. At this time, and I thought this was really interesting. I learned this from my pastor last year. There are two rulers working to achieve peace. Don't we all want peace in our life? It's really nice when we do have peace. But let's talk about that for a second. One of those rulers is Pilate. He is the Roman governor, and he is um, he is on the west gate. Uh, he is on a war horse, and he is in power and in control, and he is going to demand peace at all costs. So that's on the west gate. On the east gate is where Jesus comes in. So we've got two different ones. And listen, in, um, oh, I don't have the verses written down. It says, say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. That is what's coming in. Is that someone like, I've got my fist here and I'm going to make you have peace among yourselves? No. He is very peaceful. He is a gentle. He is a humble servant. Coming in from the east, he is riding on a donkey. Caesar, or Pilate, the Roman governor, is on a war horse, and he is going to get peace at all costs through war. Jesus is coming in on a donkey. Let's talk about this for a second, and you can even talk to your kids about some of these ideas, but who achieves true peace? 
Who achieves lasting peace? Who wins in the end? We know the ending. We know who wins the war. And there is a war going on right now above us. And the enemy is attacking. And our enemy is not here on earth. I mean, yes, we may have some, but our real enemy is fighting for our souls, fighting for our marriages, fighting for our families, fighting for our kids. And they are up in the heavenlies as well. Think about it. Look at the contrast. You could actually do a contrast compare paper between Pilate and Jesus and two types of leaders and the type of peace that they bring about and their approach to gaining peace. That would be a really good um, project for your teenagers to do as well. Another thing you could do on Palm Sunday, I showed this last week, but I want to show it again, is our Palm Sunday donkey painting. You paint the child, and the picture is better in the blog. This is just my printer printed badly. It's a gray footprint here, and there it is. Then they take their hands, and they green, and you make the palm leaves wherever they want. And then we use red, sort of like the blood of Jesus, but we use red, and they can use their fingers to write Hosanna. The next day, you can go back with a Sharpie and add the eyes and the ears or whatever decorations you want. This is just a fun thing to do. But I think one thing we need to do is focus again. As you do a craft, yes, it is fun, but we're not just doing it for fun's sake. We're doing it to remind our children of what happened on Palm Sunday and that Jesus comes to bring peace to the world, lasting peace that will always be. You know, last year um, I was at Gentry's house and uh, their little girl was almost three years old. And let me tell you, she, the one thing she remembered about Palm Sunday is Hosanna, Hosanna. If we ever talked about the donkey, we ever talked about um, Jesus coming into the city, Hosanna, Hosanna, the palm, the palm leaves. What a great thing, because that's a great thing to do is to worship God as we um, talk about that. All right, so those are a few ideas for Palm Sunday. There's lots of other things. I'm not going to, those are just a few. You can go to the Palm Sunday crafts and see some more ideas there. I just wanted to point that out to you. Let's fast forward through the week and talk about the different days during your Holy Week. So Sunday is Palm Sunday. On Monday, Jesus weeps over Jerusalem. He cleanses out the temple. On Tuesday... Judas makes a deal to betray Jesus. On Wednesday, this is the day of preparation for the Passover. And then on Thursday, we have the Passover, the Lord's Supper, the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus is betrayed all on that day. Friday, we have the trials, middle of the night, early morning, and then the cross. Saturday sets the seal on the tomb, and the guard is standing there. And on Sunday, we have Jesus achieves victory over sin and death. Now, that's a big summary, and I do have something, if you have not received it or signed up for it, we have something called a Bible reading plan, and it will outline those eight days that I've just told you about. And this actually does it, Palm Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, all the way up to Easter Sunday. And so you can use this to sort of keep you focused. Now, you could do activities for every day. I'm not going to... We're not going to do that. Today, I want to push you into Gethsemane. And what is Gethsemane? Next week, we will be talking about um, Passover and ways that you could do some, uh, even a mini Passover. You don't have to do a full one. I'm going to give you some good ideas. Then we're going to talk about Good Friday and then Easter. And then the last week um, is the Monday after Easter. What do you do? How do you move forward? And so I've got some ideas for you. So first, we have two rulers trying to achieve peace. Now let's talk about Gethsemane. And in Matthew 26, Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, sit here while I go over there to pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him. And he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as your will. Let's talk about this is Gethsemane. And what is going Jesus is in agony. He is agony over where he is about to go. 
Now, I will tell you that some of the ideas I want to share right now are things I've learned from Nancy DeMoss Wogamu in a devotional that she wrote. So I just want, I did not come up with all of these. Let's talk about what is Gethsemane. Gethsemane is the oil press. You see, that is where they would press olives to get the olive oil out of it. The Son of God is about to be pressed beyond what we could ever fathom. And he probably even knows what it's what's about to happen. Let's talk about the oil press. Well, first, if you're going to get olive oil, you're going to beat the trees and olives fall to the ground. Compare this oil press, this um, uh, oil press, to what happened to Jesus. We're going to beat the olives out. Number Then we're going to crush the olives with the millstone. Then the flesh is going to be torn off of the olive by the weight of the stone, and every cell produces tiny drops of oil. Then it's going to take great pressure to take that oil. They're going to make a paste on the stone, smear it on there, and they just press and press and press. Hey, Google, stop. It takes a huge Gethsemane stone to really press all that oil out. All right, I'm going to stop there. I didn't know where I would land, but I'm going to stop there. Let's check these um, rolls and just see if they're done. They may need another minute. And the way I check them is I just push. I'm going to put them in for like one more minute because I want to make sure they're not doughy on the inside. So let's do that. Hey, Google, set a timer for one minute. All right. All, olives beaten, crushed, torn, and pressure. Does that sound like things we've read in the Bible? Yes. Jesus feels the weight of the stone that is, going, that is being placed on him. He was beaten. He was crushed. His flesh was torn to the point that you did not recognize him as a human being. He was squeezed. He was pressured for us. Luke twenty two forty four, And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. Why? Because he loves us, and because not my will, but yours. He says, may this cup be taken from me. It's okay to pray. Please take these sufferings away from me, but not as I will, but as you will, God the Father. That is what we need to realize. And that we need to follow Jesus' example. We will never understand. Hey, Google, stop. We will never understand what Jesus was going through at the time. Never. But we can see little glimpses of it as we are walking through pain and trials. I want to stop there. I'm going to come back and talk about agony and suffering and trials. And then we're going to talk about a few more hands-on activities. But let's check those roles right now. Going to be done. And let me see if I can demonstrate this. Normally, what I would do is let the kids bite into them. I'm going to knife. But since I'm on a video, I'm going to make it so it's a little easier. Let's see. Let's just show you. Where? So we've got these rolls. I am going to cut one in half so you can see what has happened. Oh, it didn't do a very good job. I am a failure at my demonstration. Maybe I, let's try the other one. Let's do this. You know why? They need about five more minutes. So we are going to put them back in. And I'm going to turn it up to 375. Okay, sorry guys. A little failure there. We're real here. All right, let's go back. Jesus, agony. And I know it's sort of hard to go back and forth, serious and not so serious. But the word agonia means combat, contest, emphasizes pain and labor of conflict. Tension before the fight. Jesus was in a combat against hell for our salvation. Your will be done because he loves you. 
and because he loves me. He surrendered to God the Father's will. That is my word this year, and it seems like everywhere I go or whenever I'm planning a talk, that is sort of what comes up. Are you willing to go to Gethsemane to be pressed beyond what you can endure? Remember, Jesus was pressed beyond anything we endure. And sometimes we feel like we can't resist the temptation. And yet, let me tell you, you can because if you have the power of the Holy Spirit within you, you can. We need to say thank you to God that Jesus said yes to God's will instead of doing what he wanted to do. We need to follow him and have the grace to deny ourselves, surrender our will. Surrendered will just means a shattered will. And we shatter our will. That doesn't mean we don't have a will. We follow the best will. And that's God's will for us. What should be our response to Jesus and what he has done for us on the cross? Number one, I think we need to put our faith completely in him. No matter what. I was just listening to a what's that message from a friend of mine that's going through some difficult times and some business things. And they're like, I don't know why I don't just keep my faith in God because he's got it together. As soon as I surrender myself in this business deal, things start to work out. So first, faith, total trust in God. Number two, we need to love him and we need to love others well and be a picture of God's love. And then number three, worship. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Worship Jesus. He is the victory. His resurrection strength is within us. Before the battle. Oh, and think about worship. Gideon, Judges 7. When Gideon heard the dream and its interpretation, he bowed down and worshiped. He returned to the camp of Israel and called out, Get up! The Lord has given the Midianite camp into your hands. You see, he worshiped before going into the battle. That's what we need to do also. First, we worship God. And a lot of times, our worship will defeat the enemy anyway. Um, that's what happened. I can't, it may have been. It was with the, um, Gideon and his army. And I think they started singing and shouting and blowing their trumpets. And the enemy starts fighting themselves. And they don't even go into the army, into the fight. So before the battle, we need to worship God. And then we do need to get up and fight. That's not what I'm going to talk about here. I think we fight with the word of God. That's our best defense, uh, offense. Our defense are all the other um, pieces of the armor. I'd like to recommend if you want to memorize a verse this week with your kids that you memorize 1 John 3, 1. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. Yes, you can talk to your kids about being a child of God, about his love, about how he showed his love, all sorts of things. So, tell me about going into the Gethsemane. Is there something that you are walking into that you want to be transparent or that you need prayer for? If you don't want to put it as a comment, then send me a direct message or send me an email. Let's talk about this. Let's back up. And I really highly encourage you to get our Bible reading plan for Holy Week, Passion Week, going through many different um, passages here. Vinegar Boy is a great book that you can read. I'll give you some shorter books next week that are focused on Easter. Vinegar Boy is more for upper elementary um, and even to read aloud. But it is historical fiction, so there is fiction in there. But it's all about the boy who brings the vinegar to the cross at different, and the one that is at Jesus' cross. Um, our Bible reading plan, when you get the Bible reading plan, you'll get the directions to our resurrection roles. Last week, I showed you the Easter garden. You can go watch that video as well. Another thing you might consider getting ready, you could compare the two types of leaders, Pilate and Jesus. Um, homeschool ideas is what I'm giving you. You could create a timeline of Holy Week, and every day your kids can mark what happened that day and maybe the verses that will show you that's part of the story. You could create a timeline of the blood moons that are going on during Good Friday. You could create a map and label the locations of Holy Week and the movement. So it would be mostly within Jerusalem. You're not like looking at the whole um, Holy Land. We're focusing on the city, but there are things that went on outside the city wall. And so you can uh, draw a map and um, label the locations and dates. Science, you could study the blood moons. You could study solar eclipses and lunar eclipses that actually happen on Good Friday. Relate all of this science to 
Holy Week, you could talk about the body and what happened to Jesus. I would do that with older kids. Now, the last thing I want to show you before we check the, um, here we go, before we check the rolls, which probably should be coming out in just a minute, is my Skies of the Cross Easter Bundle Package. It's a Bible study for families to go through. We go through the blood moons, the solar and lunar eclipses. We go through the Bible. We look at the history. And we move forward from these um, concepts from the cross up to current blood moons and the spiritual ramifications of all of these. This is the main study. It also comes with some videos that you can watch to actually see blood moons and that type of thing. You'll also get our the Bible reading plan, but you'll also get questions for each of those days in our bundle. Easter feast chart, Easter activities of keeping Christ in Christ Easter. This is more than what is in that Bible reading plan. Oh, let's see. Oh, family, family fun Easter activity collection, 209 Easter recipes, crafts, and games. Uh, and I've already said the Easter um, feast chart. There is a link, I think, wherever you are watching this that will take you to this resource if that is something that you want to uh, use. Now, let's check our rolls this time. Normally it doesn't take this long and mine might be a little overdone. I am going to show you that this one, well, you can actually probably see some of it. I'll take my notes off. All right, you can sort of see in the one that I started to open that there's a little opening in there. And when you look at the inside of it, it's empty. That's why we call these resurrection rolls. I'm going to cut the other one in half so you can see it. I'd really like to bite into it. I guess I'll eat it after this, but I think I can get it up here. Well, here, let me jab it. If we got, oh, we got marshmallow stringiness. You probably can't see it. Yeah, you can see it. But when I open this, and I would let it cool before your kids eat it, you can see that the marshmallows melted out, and that's what makes, this is a object lesson that shows the empty tune on Sunday morning. That way on sun, Saturday night, you talk about where is Jesus, he's in the tune. Now, I'm not saying a marshmallow is Jesus, it's just a representation, but it's in there. He's in the tomb, he's buried in the tomb, but on Sunday morning, it's empty, and that's what these are all about. It's probably a little easier to see on a plate than what I am doing right now. Anyway, it's a fun activity. My kids did it even in college. We were making these things. We made them forever. What other ways could you have fun teaching your kids serious concepts? Or not even just fun, but really visual representations of what went on during Holy Week. All right, that is what I have today. I hope you all have a great day. I'll be back next week for, um, we'll talk about, um, the rest of the days during Holy Week with some more ideas for you. Hey, I'm Carrie Beck with Homeschool Coffee Break, helping moms quit being overwhelmed and know they're doing the right activities and doing enough in their homeschool. Y'all have a great day.